I want to start this tutorial thinking about an analogy. We have a baby here, and I would argue that this super cute young person has a great deal of potential. This baby, for example, could go on to specialize in all kinds of different pursuits by the time it's an adult. Perhaps this baby is going to develop and work in medicine, perhaps going to develop construction skills and build things, perhaps is going to develop knowledge and skills around fluid mechanics, aeronauticals, or, or piloting an aircraft. Who knows? The point is that this baby has this potential. We can also say that over the course of its life, it's going to begin to specialize in certain activities and pursuits, for example, treating people medically. So that is kind of neat because when we start to think about stem cells, that analogy might actually stand us in pretty good stead. Let's start our conversation, our story, thinking about a zygote. Remind yourself that a zygote is what we might refer to as a fertilized, fertilized ovum. A fertilized ovum. <clears throat> and this fused sperm and egg cell have the capacity to go on and, and produce, in the example I'm going to give, a human being. But it has to go through a few stages. So what are they? Well, first of all, over a shortish period of time, the process of mitosis or cell division is going to occur and an embryo is going to be produced. And let's be super, super clear, these cells are all completely identical to one another within this embryo. We call them embryonic stem cells. <laughs> Why I can't say that, I don't know. Embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells. And these embryonic stem cells, they have what we might describe as total potency. Sometimes we call it totipotency, by the way. You might see that term in some places. Total potency. And what do we mean by that? They can go on to be over one of over 200 cell types. So whether we are talking about uh, a hair cell, uh, um, a bone cell, a skin cell, a brain cell, these cells have the capacity, they have the potential to, to specialize into those, uh, into those specialized cell types. And that leads me to a really important term, and it is the term differentiation. These cells are differentiating over the process of this kind of specialization, which I'm gonna show you now. So let's go one more stage. And let's go to the stage of a blastocyst. And this is the first example where we can see that differentiation has actually occurred, even only in a small scale. So here, differentiation, we have some outer outer lining cells of this kind of um, of this blastocyst. And these cells here, they're going to go on to be things like the placenta and the umbil umbilical cord uh, for, the, for the infant. Whereas those inner cells, which we can refer to as the inner cell mass, the inner cell mass, it's these cells that are gonna ultimately go on to form the infant and specifically different parts of that infant, different specialist cells of that infant. So what might those cells be? Well, we've got examples here. Some of these cells are going to sp are going to eventually specialize and, and specialize in contractility as muscle cells. Others are going to specialize in terms of um, uh, communication and the, uh, and uh, messenger cells through uh, the movement of, of electrical signals as nerve cells. Others are going to form things like bone cells. I know that looks like a sprouting potato to you. It does do to, to me. But that is, at least some of our bone cells look a little bit like that. So from this group of cells here which had total potency to be any kind of human cell, those cells have differentiated and specialized into the role that they are going to perform within the body. And we see examples there. So let's move this on. Let's see if we can actually define this process. And here's our definition. An embryonic stem cell is undifferentiated. It's an undifferentiated cell which can give rise to more cells of the same type and can differentiate to form other cell types, other types of cell. So for me, the really important thing to draw out of that is if we take our embryonic um, stem cells, they can basically do two things. They can produce up arrow more stem cells. Okay, so they can produce stem cells. They can effectively reproduce um, and produce more stem cells. We've seen that in, in the embryonic stage, for example. And they can produce or they can differentiate 
they can differentiate into other cell types and that's what makes these stem cells super super exciting and super important to the development of a human being or indeed any animal or indeed any planet which we're going to look at in a few moments time now let's address what we might refer to as adult stem cells and i want to be clear here when we talk about adult we are not talking about a bit or not necessarily talking about a big six foot tall hairy backed man we might be talking about this little guy for example okay adult stem cells are found in fully formed organisms so in this case it could be a baby all the way through to an elderly person okay that's what we mean by adult stem cells and i want to talk to you about an example from the bone marrow so i want to talk about bone marrow bone marrow stem cells now we've already seen that there's stem cells in the embryo that can become anything literally anything including bone marrow stem cells but once they get to be bone marrow stem cells their potential their potency is a bit less they're not going to go on to be a nerve cell for example they're going to perform specific functions so what would they be well for example they might become a red blood cell okay they might become a red blood cell for example they may differentiate and become a white blood cell so let me draw some rudimentary white blood cell for you there or they may differentiate slightly differently under different conditions and they might develop into a really badly drawn platelet or platelet cell okay so these bone marrow cells they have potential but it's not it's not total like we saw with those embryonic stem cells they perform specific functions okay now at this stage i also want to introduce you to a therapeutic consideration and that is the idea of leukemia i'm sure as you know a very unpleasant condition which does actually affect quite a lot of people so first of all just kind of by way of an introduction just realize that with leukemia we are talking about a form of cancer and we are talking about cancer of bone cells okay so effectively what will happen with leukemia is that this bone marrow which i should have sketched in would be on the inside here of the shaft of the bone okay th this bone marrow it's going to become overpopulated with um with bone marrow cells too many of them basically so this is basically going to stop functioning as it should okay so we get the, the cancer produces too many of the wrong type of bone marrow cells and they effectively switch off the capacity to produce these blood cells as we should be able to do now in order to treat this there's a couple of stages that can happen first of all the bone marrow may well be treated with with these little blue arrows which i'm just using to depict radiation okay and the idea of that is that the cells that shouldn't be there are effectively killed off through that process so at that point temporarily we have relatively healthy bone marrow healthy we, we have bone marrow which um or we have space in the bone marrow to produce cells the problem is the bone marrow isn't actually healthy enough so what we need to do there is we need to find a donor which would have been done before of course and we need to perform what's called a bone marrow transplant bone marrow transplant now a couple of things about the donor um, quite often it's a close relative to to ensure a match um, but it can also be some from a bone marrow register who who has similar characteristics to the to the patient recipient and the reason that's important is because of course if if we um if we start producing if someone who's experiencing leukemia starts producing uh, white blood cells which don't um, that don't fit well with the individual's physiology these white blood cells could actually start attacking the body itself and this would be very very serious now a couple of other things i would just mention to you once that bone marrow has been transplanted through a massive needle by, by the way um, then what we start to see again is that the stem cells differentiate okay and what we mean by that is that i'm going to run out of space there is that these red blood cells white blood cells and platelet cells start to be produced again and, and the person hopefully can become healthier again now let's finish this conversation off by talking about plant cells and in order to do this i made a kind of a cute little drawing here not as cute as the baby i don't think but nevertheless still kind of useful now what i want us to think about here is how do how do plant stem cells operate and are they any different to animal cells in order to show you that what i'm actually going to do is i'm actually going to take a cutting before i do that actually imagine we've got i don't know imagine we've got a little pair of little a little uh, set of cutters like this and what we're going to do is effectively we are going to take a cutting of this leaf here okay i haven't actually 
done that very well. Let me do it again. Let me take a. Let me do it again. Let's do it there on a bit of that stem. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to take that. I'm going to pluck that off of there, and I'm going to spin it round. So imagine I've just cut that leaf off this plant. Okay, now a couple of interesting things about this. Where we've got the open end, the cut here, there is a there is a tissue in there which we refer to as meristem tissue, and this meristem tissue is capable of producing um, new cell growth of different types for the plant. So, for example, if we take this if we take this cutting here, we have to treat it slightly. We have to kind of coat it in what we call a hormone powder, which basically encourages the conditions that we want for the meristematic tissue or the meristem tissue to do its work. But what will basically happen here is that if we plant this in some kind of container with some kind of compost or soil like this, okay, what's going to happen here is that this meristem tissue is going to be is, is capable or has the potency to start creating things such as new root tissue, new root tissue. And eventually this plant is going to grow until in effect it's going to create, well, I mean, already it is a clone. It is a clone of the original plant. Now, that's not to say it will necessarily look the same, but genetically it will be an exact duplicate, a clone of the original plant. Now, this is something that's been done in gardening for a long period of time. This is not a new idea. But where it becomes particularly interesting is if we think about its application to agriculture. So think about sort of possibilities of developing plants or identifying plants that are, that are resistant to particular diseases. Does that mean that less of a crop is at risk of being lost? Can that mean that we can feed more people more efficiently? This kind of question, because of the properties of this meristem tissue, which is capable of effectively um, recreating um, uh, new tissue growth from the position of being an original stem cell means that we can clone plants and we can clone plants that perform particular functions very easily.